Hello everyone. Today our topic is reflection in plain mirrors. Firstly, what do you mean by plain mirror? Plain mirror it's any flat mirror. Okay? Some mirrors are concave. Okay? They are curved, but what do you, when we will say a plain mirror we mean by plain mirror a flat reflective surface so here this is an example of reflective uh, sorry example of a plain mirror if you will look at this mirror the surface of it it's flat now reflection Reflection, as we explained before, we said when a light will strike a mirror or any surface, this surface will, most of the surfaces will reflect the light. But reflection of light, it has a law. Okay, now let's see what do we mean by the laws of reflection. When a ray, is, when a ray of light strikes a mirror, it is reflected as shown on the left in this diagram. The incoming ray is the incident ray. The outgoing ray is the reflected ray. And the line at the right angle of the mirror surface is called a normal. Now, look at this diagram. This light or this line okay this it shows or it represents the incident ray so here it's the incident ray then when this incident ray will strike a mirror the ray will be reflected this is the reflected ray now what do we have we have two rays one Two. This one, the one that it will strike the surface, we call it incident. The one that it will reflect, well, the one that will be reflected by the mirror surface, we call it reflected ray. And between incident ray and reflected ray, we have a vertical or straight line. Okay? A line at right angles to the mirror surface is called a normal. Now, what do we need to care about? It's one, two, and three. Incident ray, reflected ray, and the right angle, uh, and the line, which is normal. Okay? In this case, is a plane mirror. This just means that flat, that is a flat mirror, okay? So if you will have a question, it says, what is the meaning of plane mirror? You will say it means it's a flat mirror, okay? Now, there are two laws of reflection. They apply to all types of mirrors. Now, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. What's that mean? Let's take a look here. This is the incident ray. Okay? Here, when it strikes the mirror surface, okay, here it will form an angle. Okay? As you can see this line, this is the angle of incident. Incidence. Always the angle of incidence it's equal to the angle of reflection so this angle it's equal to this angle for example if they will say the angle of incidence it's for example 35 degrees so how much is the angle of reflection the answer will be the same 35 if here it's 35 also here will be 35. If here it's 40, also here will be 40 and for all the numbers. 
Then, number two. The incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal all lay in the same plane. What's that mean? Incident ray, reflected ray, normal, all of them, where we can find them, all of them, they are here on the same plane. Okay? Some definitions. Angle of incidence. This is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. Angle of refraction. Is, this is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. Image in a plane mirror. Take a look on this diagram. This diagram, focus on these words. Mirror, object, and image. Firstly, here we have this person, a girl, and here we have this lamp, okay, and here we have the mirror. This person, or this girl, she is seeing, she is looking at the mirror, and she is seeing the lamp, or the bulb, okay, but in fact, here what is happening, the person or the girl, she is not seeing the object directly. She is seeing what? She is seeing the image of the object. In another words, now take a look on the rays. The light or the bulb, the lamp, is sending rays. These rays are going to the mirror, and the mirror now will reflect it. Okay? But, now what is happening, this person, she is seeing an image of the object. It seems this girl, when she is looking at the mirror, it seems she is seeing the lamp or she is seeing the, the image of lamp. It's coming from behind of the mirror. Okay? So, here, now, she is seeing what? She is seeing the image of the object. Because she is not looking directly to the object, she is looking at a mirror, and by the help of the mirror, she is seeing the object. So now she is not say she is not seeing the object. She is seeing the image of the object. Now, the image seen in the mirror looks exactly the same as the object. So here are some uh, features of the images, images that we see it, uh, by using a mirror or plain mirror. Uh, focus here. The image seen in the mirror looks exactly the same as the object. Apart, apart from one important difference, the image is literally inverted. What do you mean by inverted? It's upside down so the image that we will see here it's the same as this one okay it's same as object but it's what it's inverted it's upside down now for images we have two types of images we call them real image and virtual image. Another meaning for virtual, it's non-real. It's not real image. Now, 
what is the difference between uh, the real image and virtual image now in cinema the image on the screen is called real image why what's that mean if you are here this is you and here let's say let's take an example say here it's the screen so here what is happening the light or the rays are coming directly to your eyes so this kind of image we call it real image okay but if you look at this image this we called it what virtual non real image why because here what it's happening you are seeing the reflection of rays the reflection of the image that's why we call it virtual image we will see uh, a video uh, it explains more the difference between uh, real and uh, virtual image before we see the video uh, just one explanation about virtual image when we say image it it's uh, the virtual image is the same distance but inverted here look at this uh, car or the ambulance always when you look at the ambulance you will see they write the word ambulance uh, inverted okay so it's up, uh, upside down the reason behind this why because when you are in front of this car when you will look at the mirror inside the car so what will happen the there will be a light or a ray from this words to the mirror in your car and then from the mirror in your car to your eyes so here what did you see you see a image of the car so the distance it will be the same okay and the, the the picture or the image it will be the same but how you will receive it you will receive it inverted so when you look at the mirror you can read the word imbalance uh, correctly and it shows it's written uh, correctly but in fact it's what it's inverted let me ask you a question this image that you see here is it a real image or a virtual one this image is a virtual image in order to explain what a virtual image is let's first simplify this image let's represent this boy with an arrow pointing up and here is our plain mirror you can assume the top of the arrow to be the top of the head of a boy. Now, where is the image of the boy formed? When we see the image in the mirror, it seems to us that the image is formed somewhere behind the mirror. But there is nothing behind the mirror, right? For us, the light rays seem to come from the location present behind the mirror. For instance, consider a few light rays emerging from top of the arrow. All these rays are incident on the mirror and get reflected back. Yes, all the reflected rays will follow the laws of reflection. You see that all the reflected rays are moving away from each other, that is, they are diverging. But we know that the image is formed somewhere behind the mirror. So let me extend these reflected rays backwards and see what happens. We see that they meet at this point behind the mirror. And to us, this is where the top of the image appears to be. When we look at this point, it appears to us that all the light rays are diverging from this point. But in reality, there are no light rays behind the mirror. This being a smooth and shiny surface reflects most of the light back and almost no light reaches behind. But yet, we have the perception that the light rays are coming from the point behind. So we just consider the top of the arrow here. We can do something similar for the remaining points on the object to get the complete image. So we say that the image formed here is virtual 
or in other words, not real. You can think of a virtual image as an image which appears to be formed in a position somewhere behind the mirror. But in reality, it isn't there. A virtual image is formed when the light rays diverge after reflection from the mirror. Every plane mirror forms a virtual image. This is the first characteristic of the images formed by plane mirrors. Images formed by plane mirrors are virtual and not real. So what is the real image then and how are they formed? Let's replace this plane mirror with a spherical concave mirror. Why? It's because real images can be formed by concave mirrors. Let's consider the light rays from the same point of the object incident on the mirror. We see that after reflection, each ray is traveling in a certain direction. Note that here as well, each ray obeys the law of reflection. What difference did you notice here compared to the plane mirror reflection? In the previous case, all the reflected rays were diverging. Yes, here all the reflected rays after reflection are intersecting each other at this point, or we can say that they are converging at this point. And the image of the top of the arrow is formed at this point. And we can do something similar for the remaining points of the object too. We get this image. This is called a real image. It is the image formed when light rays converge after reflection from the surface. One important thing we need to know is that real images formed by concave mirrors are always inverted. We will learn more about this in the future videos. You see that in this case, the image is formed on the same side of the mirror as the object is. Real images are always formed on the same side as that of the object and light rays do reach this position. When we look at the real image formed by a concave mirror, it also seems to us that the light rays are diverging. But here the rays actually are diverging from a point in front of a mirror. Whereas in the case of a plane mirror, it appears to us that the rays were diverging from the point behind the mirror. So did you understand the difference between a virtual image and a real image? When we look at a virtual image, it appears to us that the light rays are diverging from a point somewhere behind the mirror, but in reality, they aren't as no light reaches behind the mirror. It's only our perception. And in the case of a real image, the light rays are actually diverging from the point present on the same side of the mirror. In reality, light rays indeed reach this point. Hence, we call it a real image. I mentioned earlier that concave mirrors form real images. In fact, they form both real and virtual images. And what does it depend on? It depends on the distance of the object from the mirror. We will learn more about the real images formed by concave mirrors in our future videos. First, let's go back to our plane mirrors. This is only one of the characteristics of an image formed by a plane mirror. We will see more in our next video. Finding the position of an image in a mirror. Here we will have an experiment that shows how we can determine the position of the image in uh, this mirror. For example, now what do you need? You need a pin, mirror, plane mirror, and pen with a ruler. Now, here is the pin, and here is the mirror. When you look at the mirror, you will see the pin. Okay, but how we can determine the position of this image okay you can here when you look at the mirror you will see the image of the pin okay here look at this one he is looking at the mirror and he is seeing the image of this uh, pin now how we can determine the image position what do you need uh, here or what you will do put a mirror upright on a piece of paper, put a pin in front of it, mark the position of the pin and the mirror. Here, 
as you can see he is marking or making a dot that it shows the position of a pin and also the mirror now you will line up the ruler here in a position that when you will look from it you will see here the ruler it's making a straight line or a line a straight line that it meet with the uh, image of the uh, image of pin on the mirror okay then you will do the same thing for the other side then when you will take out this uh, mi mi mirror okay and if you will connect these uh, lines you will see these two lines it will meet in a point so this point it's what it's the position of the image uh, for more explanation for uh, about this uh, experiment uh, also now we will see a video that it shows how uh, how we can do this experiment Hi guys, today I want to show you an experiment uh, how you can locate uh, the image of an object in the uh, in a mirror, in a plain mirror. And my object in this case is my toothpick here, and then you can just see the image of the toothpick uh, there. So to show what, what we want to do in this experiment, we want to show that the distance from the mirror surface to the object is the same from the mirror surface to the image. So how you do this? Well, firstly, you get your mirror here, and then you're going to hold it there with two uh, four pins. And I've drawn a line there that just represents the mirror's surface uh, just there. Okay, then you get two other pins, and you line up the pins from the side so they line up with the uh, the image of the cocktail sticks. So if I move so it over across the, the image, image, just at this point the here, three, the two uh, pins the are two making pins one straight and the line. Cocktail stick line up. Then on this side, again, I'm going to do the same thing. So here you can just see the pins, the two pins here, they're lining up with the image of the cocktail stick. If we move this way or this way, you can see all three. But if I line up just here, okay, this is where my two pins line up with my cocktail stick here. Okay. Then, okay, now we're just going to remove everything. So I'm just going to remove all the pins. Oops. I'm going to remove the cocktail stick as well. I think we'll even remove the mirror. So, these two pins here, you draw a line and you carry it, carry on going all the way uh, through here. Remove these pins as well. Okay, so single line going all the way across like that, and you keep it going all the way through here. Likewise, to the other side, there's one pin hole, there's the other. You draw a straight line, okay? And you keep it going all the way through there. So it's like, it appears like the light came from this direction. And it appears like the light came from this direction. Although really what's happened is they've come off the object and rebounded like this. Okay, so if you trace back where these two, uh, sorry, where these two lines uh, meet here, this is where our image is being formed by the mirror. If you measure this distance from here to the mirror line, Okay, from here to here, to the surface of the mirror, and from here to the object, you'll find that they're the same. In my case, it was six centimeters. Okay, guys, I hope this is clear, making sense. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye for now. So I hope the video was clear. Now, rules for image size and position when a plane mirror forms an image the image is the same size as the object always the image that you will see it by using a plane plane mirror it's same uh, the, the size of the image is the same as the same size of uh, object the image is far behind the mirror as the object is in front as he explained he said the distance between the object and mirror 
it was six centimeters and the distance from the mirror from mirror to the uh, image also it was six centimeters so always the, the these distances are uh, equal or uh, the same each, as each other a line joining equivalent points on the object and image passes through the mirror at right angle okay what's that mean here it's the mirror and here it's the object and here it's the image a line joining equivalent point on the object and image it passes through what through the mirror at right angle what does that mean now the angle between here this angle okay the angle between the line and the mirror it's uh, uh, it's right angle so always this angle it is a uh, right angle questions question number one a copy the diagram on the right draw in the image in its correct position so in your book in the questions there is this diagram it says copy this diagram and draw the image in its correct position so here what do we have we have this it's the object we need and here it's the mirror so and here it's your eye so when you will look at the mirror okay you will see the object but we said this kind the, the image here it will form always behind the mirror so the image it should be in a place here but where it will be here it's the answer so how it will be the object will send a ray to the mirror and uh, the mirror here okay it will reflect the light so it's the direction is like this it's coming this is incident ray and here it's a reflected ray okay as you can see here we have two rays by the way we can draw more than one more than two rays but uh, only two rays it's enough okay now depending on the law of uh, reflection here how it will be so this now this angle it will reflect the same angle here so this it's like drawing imaginary lines one two okay we will see these two lines will meet at this point so now this it's the image we say the image it's the same size same distance but it's what it is inverted or it's upside down as you can see here the arrow the direction of this arrow it's up but here it's down so uh, the size it's the same the distance it's the same from the mirror only the difference is what it's the uh, upside down the the image here it's uh, inverted B from the object arrow step A draw two rays which reflect uh, from the mirror and go into the person's eye so here it says draw two arrows uh, at the beginning we draw we draw like this two uh, two rays okay uh, now it says draw two rays from mirror to the eye so we will draw it in this way okay as it's shown here but here you should depend on one thing which is the uh, angle okay the angle between uh, incident ray and the reflected ray uh, as we said here we will have the normal which is a straight vertical line and uh, 
uh, here it should be a uh, right angle between the normal with the mirror so the size uh, of this uh, angle okay this this one okay it should be equal to the side of this one c the image cannot be formed on cannot be focused on the word cannot be formed on a screen what name uh, is given to this type of image we say it, we have two types of image it's either real image or virtual image in real image we say it always it's on screen but here it says cannot be formed so what kind of uh, image this will be the answer will be virtual d can the person see an image of the arrow's tail b okay focus on this point if not why not okay we said to see any object there should be a reflection now when we talked about a we saw a tip it sent a ray to this direction okay and it reflect it to the eye but can we see image of b that is, the answer will be no but why because here b when it will send a ray it's with the direction of the mirror there won't be any reflection okay so no rays from b striking mirror will reflect into i okay so in a there is a reflection but in b there won't there isn't any uh, reflection so that's why uh, the answer will be no question number two it says a man stands 10 meter in front of a large plane focus on the word plane mirror okay just when you will uh, see the when you will see the word plane mirror you, it should comes to your mind that uh, object you will have object and image the image here it's virtual then one more thing it's the distance from object to the mirror it's same as the distance from uh, mirror to the uh, image of it now it says this man is standing 10 meter in front of large plane uh, plane mirror so this one it's the mirror okay and here it's the man so the distance from here to here how much it is it is 10 meter now the image of it how far it will be how far it looks also here it will be 10 meters is it clear the distance from uh, object or the man to the mirror it's 10 meter because it's plain plain mirror so also the distance from here from the mirror to the image also will be 10 uh, meters now it says how far must he walk before he is five meter away from his image focus here how far must he walk before he is five meter away from his image don't confuse uh, he, here they said from his image not from the mirror okay now the answer here here it's the answer it says he should move okay until the distance between him and his image it should be five meter so what's that mean there the mirror now it's between him and his image okay they say the distance from him to the image of him it should be five meter so 
how far he must he walk? He should walk for 7.5 meters. Okay, and here, now it was here, it's 10 meters, the distance between him and the mirror. If he will walk 7.5, sorry, 7.5 meters. Now, how much left between him and the mirror? 2.5 meter okay now the question it says the distance between him and his image it should be 5 because it's plane mirror so if here it's 2.5 so how much is the distance between mirror and the image also will be 2.5 now this 2.5 Plus this 2.5, the answer will be uh, 5 meters. So this was everything for this topic. I hope it was clear and I hope you got benefit from it. Uh, don't forget, write, uh, write a comment in the video. Okay, uh, just to make sure everyone here received the uh, video and your task for this lesson again it's what it's the uh, question solving the questions of the workbook have a good day